And Tony said to me, you shouldn't bath the whole time. And I tried it. I tried for like three days. And then I was like, you know what? I, I, this is too far. Tony, I want to start with you. Um, what a mesmerizing movie, by the way. What was your goal in approaching this film? What was the number one thing that you wanted to accomplish? The goal was to really put you in the place of Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, as much as possible. You know, and that's what I was interested in. How did this guy live? You know, he lived off the off the land, you know, off the grid, no running water, no electricity. And how did he come to basically paralyze the nation with his bombing campaign? But also at the same time, you know, his ideas, uh, you know, you know, have become more prophetic as time has gone on. So I just, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like an evolving character where depending on the period and depending on, you know, how we are dealing with technology and environmental degradation, people sort of look back on them different. So this idea started, you know, over 10 years ago, and it's been interesting to evolve, you know, seeing how people's ideas on Ted Kaczynski have evolved over the last decade. Definitely, because we have seen, you know, Ted's story told in the past from the FBI side, from the manhunt side. So how do you decide, how did you select what aspects of Ted's life to focus on? Put, setting the film right before his arrest, to me was the most fascinating, of the, because that's when things started really to accelerate, you know? So that's why the film is sort of, you know, loosely five to 10 years before, he was captured and we kind of condensed things, but there's also, you see that there's big time gaps, you know, but um, just wanted the audience to, to be in the moment with the character and kind of, you know, avoid us sort of putting this sort of morality tale of what is right and what is wrong and lecturing the audience. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just wanted to kind of like show you Ted, show his actions as they were, you know, we did base the film off his writings, you know, over 10,000 pages. So it really is his own wor words. And we also filmed on the exact location where he lived. So just trying to be as accurate as possible, be as subjective as possible too, but through that becoming objective. So Charlto, for you, I know you're also a producer on the film as well as its wonderful star. How did you get involved? I got the script from my agents and I knew very little about the Unabomber. I, I remember, you know, I was in South Africa at the time. I remember some story about him, but I just thought he was one of the sort of domestic terrorists that had blown up a building or something. And I was like, I don't really feel like playing a role of a, like a serial killer, you know, but I took a look at the script and then I looked him up and I, and I looked up the manifesto. And once I read his manifesto, I was like, okay, whoa, there's way more to this guy than was in my head, certainly. And then I was looking at the press reports and stuff and I was like, wow, but it doesn't quite look like, it doesn't really add up. Like what's written in the media, it's like this crazy madman just went nuts and was like, bombing. I was like, wait, whoa, whoa. Like there's a lot more to this guy and what he was doing and why he was doing it. So that was my point of, of sort of entry. And then actually listening to him speak. Um, and I'd seen, I'd seen some stuff on him in the past. Oh no, I hadn't actually. I watched the Manhunt Unabomb after I saw this. Um, but his way of speaking, because I, I looked up, there's only one interview with the real Ted Kaczynski. And his energy level and the way that he spoke, I was like, actually, I relate to this. Like his voice, his his intensity was totally different from again the stereotypical sort of thing that you imagine of you know the quiet low energy guy the whole time he has a real intensity to him and, and his personality you nailed that voice by the way because i did a comparison after i watched the movie i was like <laughs> what does he sound like that and it's like yeah. uncanny that was one of the more shocking parts to me i was like and and also when you go into his writings i mean there's so much that we couldn't include in the movie but he speaks at one point about either i'm going to become a a dictator and try and overthrow the society or I'm going to just try and live off the grid and just not get involved. And so my interpretation of his personality certainly is that there's a version of him when he's, when he's given the microphone, if, you know, which is not the case in the film, but when you hear him in his interview, that he could have been a leader. He could have definitely stood up in front of people and spoken in a way that got people motivated and, and, and rallying behind him had he chosen that route, which might have been a better idea, all things considered. What were some of the other physical uh, transformations that you made for the film? Obviously, we were living, like, like, like Tony says, we built the cabin on the exact spot. I mean, Tony put the, the feet back where the FBI had sort of cut the cabin, you know, cut the feet off and taken the cabin away as like a trophy. <laughs> you know? That is and, wild uh, they did that. <laughs> it, it's amazing. It, it's, 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 so, it's so interesting, human nature, you know. And, um, but, you know, one of the physical ones, obviously I, I, I basically just went as all in as I could living in the environment. But Tony had said to me, like, you know, because he was known to not bath, like he would go six months without bathing. So people in the community, because we met a lot of people who knew him, 
in Montana. We were working with locals. Our other producer, Matt, is from Montana. So we had local connections. We had the local community working with us. So we met tons of people who had met him. And the biggest thing about him was his, that well, not the biggest thing, but one of the factors they all spoke about was he, he didn't smell good. Like if they gave him a lift in a car or something. And Tony said to me, you shouldn't bath the whole time. And I tried it. I tried for like three days. And then I was like, you know what? I, I This is too far. Like, this is going to just, he's like, yeah, but it'll make the crew awkward. And I was like, it's too awkward. Like I've got wardrobe people working on me. <laughs> so I needed to bath, I, you know, but uh, I tried to get as dirty as I could. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not that method. <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> Tony, how did you how did you guys secure like filming on that lamb? Was that difficult or how'd that go? You know, Montana is such a small world. It ended up that our uh, producer Matt Flanders' sister went to school with the uh, the couple the the one of the, the woman who owned the the land. So, um, uh, you know, and they were interested in us telling the story there and they were planning on building a house. And before they did that, they just let us have the land for a year. So we were just super fortunate and, you know, the timing. Um, and uh, we, um, you know, we just wanted to tell it, you know, as, as accurate as possible. And so being there in the exact spot, you know, we were able to, you know, use the actual garden where Ted grew his vegetables, you know, the actual root cellar, you know, the actual bucket that Charlotte, that Ted Kaczynski occasionally showered, you know, we recreated, you know, so we do have a shower and scene that shows Ted, you know, cleaning up and uh, getting rid of the smell before he gets to town. So, um, you know, it was just, uh, yeah, just trying, just trying to put you in the place as much as possible and, uh, and just have it be an experiential film more than anything else. What did physically being there filming there, what did that do to you, Charlotte? So how did that how do you feel like that kind of changed your process? It was it was profound. It was absolutely profound. One of the things, like, because we were there through all the different seasons, we came back. When I was there in winter and we would go up onto the mountains, you know, we did, we shot obviously so much stuff that's not in the film. We almost shot it like a documentary. It was almost a spiritual experience, really. The level of quiet that you would have. And then I'd be sitting there and I'd really, and then suddenly you do hear a jet. You suddenly hear like one single jet at 30,000 feet or whatever height. And it's like, wow, that is kind of annoying. <laughs> I could kind of see how, I could kind of, it was bizarre. It was a, it was a real, you're living in that environment. I mean, I actually recorded and we, I, we still actually trying to do this. I, I just felt moved to kind of record the sounds of the environment because they would have been exactly what he was experiencing what the birds like, or just the sounds in his cabin, everything. We, we, it was so similar. So we actually recorded a whole bunch of stuff and I wanted to send those to him in prison because he's been so locked away from that nature. I just felt the connection there of just wanting to give him those sounds again. Did you talk to him? Is he like accessible to talk to at all? No, we wrote him, I, I wrote him a letter, you know, before we did the movie, but but he didn't respond. I don't think he trusts anybody outside of, of you know, I think he got screwed over by a journalist who went and interviewed him in prison from his point of view at least, and uh, and then just didn't trust the media again at all. Charlton, I want to ask you, because I got to wrap it up, but you were recently announced as part of Russian Doll season two, which yeah. is, <laughs> what, were you a fan of season one? What can we expect? Everyone's so excited. <laughs> oh, I'm not allowed to say anything. Natasha will totally kill me. But it was, it's really original. I'll say that, man. She's really, that really, that whole team is just coming up with really creative stuff. So they, 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 they raised the bar again, which is, uh, you wouldn't necessarily think they could do, but she did, they did. Uh, well, we can't wait. Congratulations on the film. So lovely talking to you both. This is awesome. Thanks, right. Thank you. Thanks guys, take care.